Hello friends and welcome to Rugged Outdoors Guide. My name is Pete, I'm glad to have you with me today. Today I'm gonna to be talking about something that is near and dear to my heart. I've been doing this for years and years and I have many, many people who ask me all about this all the time on a personal level. Uh, and so today I'm gonna to actually make a video about it and <laughs> it is a really, really wide, big, extensive air, uh, topic that I just can't get into all the details. Now it's impossible, it's too vast. So I'm just gonna narrow it down and show you kind of what I do. What I'm talking about is beeswax candle making. And um, just to kind of give you a brief overview, anything that a bee makes, and this is why I do this, by the way, this is why I have this on Rugged Outdoors Guide. You guys know I'm into things that are natural. Outdoors, yes, but sometimes indoors, if it relates to survival or just sustenance of my family. So anything that a bee makes, I mean, we're talking, you know, the obvious stuff like honey and wax and pollen, and there's like a hundred other different <laughs> products that they create. It's all really, really good for you. Even the bee venom has cured my brother of arthritis. Basically, you just, you, you put the venom on your, your um, joints that hurt. Sounds anti whatever, fetical, or, or it sounds like the opposite, but it's the, the, the reality is that it's actually good for you. Believe it or not, research it yourself. So with that in mind, I did a lot of research years ago on beeswax, beeswax candles, and um, are beeswax candles really that much better than other candles, like paraffin candles. Guys, oh my goodness, I could go on for literally, like actually about an hour on the benefits of beeswax compared to other waxes. Beeswax actually, uh, I'll just give you one little tidbit. Beeswax candles, if you take a beeswax candle, put it uh, in a room right beside a paraffin candle. Paraffin candles actually cause pollution. They're the ones that'll make things black. If you put a piece of paper or something near the flame, um, it'll become black. It's, it's pollution. If you put a beeswax candle beside a paraffin candle, after some time, there's different variables, but basically after some time, the beeswax candle, somehow, I can't explain this scientifically, I just have seen it happen, it actually grabs particles of pollution from the air, whatever comes off the beeswax candle, and you'll see it settle to the ground. In other words, it's cleaning the air from pollutants rather than adding to it. Every other candle that I know of, or at least most of them, commercially available ones at, at uh, you know, uh, little gift stores and things like that, those really smelly ones made out of paraffin and they're all like bright red or whatever color, all that stuff, it, it, it can sound nice and it looks nice and it can smell nice, but it's all fake and it's all chemicals. It's bad for you. Beeswax, 100% natural. Don't mix it with anything. 100% natural, it's healthy. So, with that in mind, I'm gonna show you just a couple of the candles that I make. I make um, tapers and I make pillars. And um, I'll, I'll show you those briefly. I don't spend a lot of time messing with them. I'm gonna show you very quickly how I do it and my equipment, and I know that you can compile this equipment. Any equipment that I use, I'm gonna have listed below um, in the description, like the size of my wicks for what size candles and um, you know different, different ways that you can access beeswax. Basically, that's just through local suppliers. I would just look at local uh, um, beekeeping operations. That's all we do. And um, you just need a mold or two and some wicks and the wax. And then there are some basic things that you need. I'll show you those right away. Let's get into it right now. Okay, let's get started. First thing you need is a, a hot sort of stove scenario like this. This is just a little double double burner. You can get it in any, uh, you know, probably a secondhand shop, but you know, at, at whatever appliance place or Walmart or whatever. Okay, so you that, you know, on a table somewhere. I would suggest not doing this in your kitchen because beeswax can be very sticky and it kind of gets everywhere, right? So that's the first thing. Second thing is just a, a big pot like this and then I have a thing that I just made up from a coffee can and um, it's basically a double boiler. Um, you don't want to put beeswax directly on a hot plate. You want it to be hot water that is melting it, all right? You can see that I, I, these are rough chunks of beeswax that I've bashed up from bigger chunks. I just take an ax to them and chop them all up and then they go into the double boiler 
um, the melting section, all right? So I've got a bunch of that, but, but I've got enough in here already, as you can see. And, um, and then just some basic tools, some scissors and um, uh, a, a ladle that I use to pour in some cases, but I don't even use it all the time. And then what you need is a wick and a mold. I know this is kind of a crazy looking thing. It's not what you think. It's just a taper mold. Now the traditional way of making taper candles is to basically take a wick like this thin wick and dip it into uh, wax over and over and over again. That's how the pioneers did it. You'll see that at, at, at different pioneer village displays and, and um, that sort of thing. Um, I don't do that. So what I do is something far more or far quicker and easier. And that is um, I use a mold like this one. It, it, uh, you, you pour the wax in here. It doesn't, it doesn't stick to the silicone and way down here on the other side, you can't see it because it's inside and this section is a taper and it tapers down and then, and then I just pop it out of the mold and I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. So what I'm gonna show you right now is how I pour this. So you take a wick, you pop it through a little hole in the bottom, all right? You just kind of push it through it's no big deal, it's pretty easy to do. And um, you bring it out the other side. And I, I stand it up into this sort of can here because it won't stand up quite on its own. There's different ways you can do it, whatever. I then will take a large, I don't know if you can see it against, yeah, there you go. It's a hairpin. Okay, it can be almost anything that, like a clothespin or whatever, but I, I, um, I put, the wick through this and then I center it in the, um, the mold because you have to have it centered otherwise it's not going to work and you need to hold the wick up so it doesn't fall into the, the mold itself. So that's what the hairpin is for. And then all I'm going to do is take this melted wax and I'm going to pour it into the, um, the mold. Usually overflows a tiny bit, no big deal. It just goes into the can and then I just peel it off and reuse it. I, I moved the wick a little bit out of the way, so now I'm going to Bring it right back in the center. And, uh, and that's really it. At this point, I just let it sit. Now in this size of a mold, this will be ready to come out in about 15 to 20 minutes. All right now what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do a pillar. That is uh, basically the same process. Now this is another silicone mold. I've kind of got it prepared here. It's exactly the same process in the bottom is a just a hole that you pop a wick through and again i'll show you i'll, I'll put the wick sizes in the des description below for the different uh, candles and this one is a three by three inch pillar that's that's kind of what you're going to get out of it and by the way i may as well just show you right now this is one that i've just done recently um, three by three pillar that's what you get out of it right so it's, uh, it'll last a long, long time. Okay, so I've done the same type of thing. This, I just have a different rigging here because my clothespin isn't long enough to go across the whole opening. So I've got the wick in the, uh, the hairpin and then I have just another little piece of wood holding part of the hairpin. So the wick is coming straight up the middle and basically the same thing. So here I go, I'm gonna pour this one. And the wax won't come out the bottom because silicone is pretty good at stopping that. So, so there we go. I, I come up near the top. I don't go all the way so that it doesn't get caught in all this rigging at the top. Like I don't want like wax in the, in the clothes or the uh, hairpin and all that kind of stuff. So I just stopped a tiny bit short. This is going to take about an hour or so to be cool enough 
to release and to let it out. These are two things that I make quite often. The, um, the, the, the tapers and the pillars. I do have molds for all sorts of other ones that I do on occasion, but this is kind of my staple that I have for my family and uh, I give away to friends as well. Okay, just one quick note here about molds in general. Now, I told you about a silicone mold. Please, if you can just do anything you can to get a silicone mold. Don't get a lot of them, get one or two. I'm telling you, they, they require like no maintenance, they don't require a release agent, which you're gonna need for other types of molds. And the best of all is that when you pull the wick through the bottom of it, which is how you gotta get it in, um, it will not typically leak unless there's a real problem with it, but it won't leak. Here's the thing, any other molds you get are going to be less expensive, like this uh, metal one, the, here's an acrylic one, they look great. The problem is that, number one, you're gonna have the beeswax is gonna stick to the sides of any other molds, pretty much across the board, right? You're gonna need a release agent, and that's something like a lubricant. Um, I've tried everything, I've tried things like WD-40, with, with mixed results. Um, a real release agent is gonna be better, but it's gonna cost more money. And so it's, you're starting to eat into the profits or the savings that you realized when you didn't buy the silicone. The other thing is even a bigger deal than the needing the release agent is that on the very bottom of these, where the wick enters into the mold itself and then you pull it up and secure it at the top, that hole will almost always leak. And I mean serious leak. In fact, um, there's, there's ways you can try to stop it. You can use uh, like a stick tack or some sort of tape or you know, there's different things you can buy. Again, you're adding to the cost. But here's the thing, I've been doing this for years and I kind of know how to deal with this situation, but even that's not foolproof. I used a huge wad of stick tack um, probably the size of like as big around as maybe a quarter and thicker than a quarter and I really rammed it in there so that uh, there'd be no leakage once I poured the hot wax into this mold. Just did this yesterday and it failed. And when it fails, you got problems. Um, you better make sure this is sitting in a plate or container of some sort where it'll contain the wax. If not, it'll just go all over your table and onto the floor. And even if it is in a container, it's gonna, you're gonna lose pretty much everything. I had it filled right up to the top of this, uh, this what is this, uh, seven inches or something like that. And it went right, right down, like we're talking right down to less than an inch. I had to pull this out and then deal with the mess that it created, not to mention all the wasted time in melting the wax to try to get it here. Do not waste your time with these. Get silicone molds and I would say a, a good return on investment would be a three by three a mold that I showed you earlier that I'm working on now and a um, taper or you could even get two because they're small, they're easy to work with, they're less expensive than bigger ones and they create candles that are exactly what you'll probably want for your own household, whether it's decorative or functional or even emergency oriented. All three of those can work really, really well with a three by three pillar. And the tapers are great as gifts, as well as just to have in your own home for lighting. You can, you can get holders for uh, pillar candles just about anywhere and um, it's just a good deal all around. All right, those are my tips for candle making. Okay, just a couple other little tidbits while we're waiting for the candles to um, solidify. In my double boiler, um, just, I don't know if you can see under there, yeah, you can see, I have a chain, it just, it just had one lying around, it seems to work and, and I don't really need it for anything else. Um, you can put rocks, that's in there to separate the actual, uh, melting pot here from the boiling pot. If you don't have something in there, it'll there'll be you know boiling water underneath this, and it'll make all kinds of terrible noises. Bubbles are escaping, and it's just not good. So anything to separate this um, melting pot from the main uh, water boiling pot. So there are a few other little things. Um, I have a heat gun, 
and the purpose of the heat gun is to help deal with wax. Wax gets everywhere and you can't really get it off very easily. If you get wax on your clothing, that's, that's a bit of a pain. So what I use is the heat gun and then just a, um, a paper towel. This is like an industrial paper towel and you just dab it off and, and this will soak it right up once it's really hot. Um, of course, you want a pair of scissors. I have pliers for different new, uh, nuanced things that I do. I have a, a piece of wire here that you can't even see uh, that I use to pull a wick through when I start on this unit here. Um, but anyway, you'll, you'll figure out something on your own. And um, really, that's about it. You can see there's really not much else on this table other than, than the, the molds that I'm working on. It's about 15 minutes later, 17 minutes or so, and uh, here is the taper mold, and I'll show you how this works. It comes out pretty easily. I'm just going to turn it upside down, and look at that. It comes out without any, any pulling even. So I'm just going to gently pull it out until we see a bit of the uh, wick, and then I cut it off at about the length that I want it, which is a couple centimeters. And then what I'll do is I'll just cut off the other side and then this stuff well you can do whatever with what the end looks like it doesn't really matter you can fold it over or you can you can peel it off some of the extra excess put it back in the uh, the boiler and that is basically it it's a nice looking taper it looks like I've you know dipped it 50 times and let the wax dry in a traditional dipping scenario, but there's no dipping, it's a mold. All right guys, it's about 40 minutes later or so, and I've got my pillar candle here, and it has, it has released, I don't know if you can see in there, it's moving around, it's released from the edges on its own, because it's contracted as it's cooled. And I'm just gonna get rid of this rigging here, this piece of wood and this hairpin. And, um, you can see on the bottom here, I've, you see a little bit of the wick. I've cut that off. It was, it was attached to the spool, but I've cut that off just because it, it's easier to release this if you just take something and kind of push that wick through the hole, kind of like that. And then we'll see if this falls out on its own. I don't want to pull too hard. Because I could, um, if, you, if you release this and, uh, too early and, and kind of force the issue and try to get it out, what will happen is you'll end up pulling the wick because that's the only thing you can get a hold of. And the inside of the candle is not going to be uh, uh, solid yet. And so what will happen is you just pull the wick right out. Right? That's what happens oftentimes when you're um, working with pillars like this. So I'm going to try, I'm, I'm, I'm very gentle with it right now. I don't want to do that want to get a hold of the edges of it. Okay, it looks like I've got it now. And there you go. Doesn't look like too much. Um, what you can do, what I almost always do now at this point is that I will dip this a few times into uh, this into the, um, the the wax melter so that it just has a more finished look to it as you can see the edges along here pretty sharp none of this matters if you're not going for looks all right if you're looking for a survival type of a candle um, or emergency in your household this is perfect absolutely perfect it's uh, it's healthy for your home uh, I would say I would go so far as to say it's healthy to breathe um, as opposed to just not being toxic it's actually healthy and you don't need anything that looks beautiful like dripped wax you know over the edges you see some of those fancier candles this is not meant to be fancy this is for survival if you want to get fancier you can just look at there's lots of videos about how to pour wax around the the outside of it to make it look really like saleable all right friends thanks for joining me on this edition of rugged outdoors guide uh, if you enjoy diy videos like this on how to make um, survival candles which can also double as gifts to be honest because everybody loves these and ah, the smell is incredible uh, i know that's not very rugged outdoorsy to say that but just being honest and i know that even if you're a big rugged tough outdoors dude you're going to love the smell of freshly 
uh, made beeswax candles with nothing in them, just beeswax. It smells like, like honey and other wholesome things. It's just a, a nice, sweet smell. So guys, do give me a like and a subscribe if you don't mind just bringing your cursor down just a little bit below the video or, or uh, you know, just swiping up a bit and hitting the like button. Uh, that would help me very much. It helps um, YouTube with the right algorithms saying, hey, this guy sort of knows what he's talking about and uh, you might want to check him out. Thanks very much, guys. I do hope to see you very soon. I don't know when um, uh, my videos come out uh, once every couple of weeks or maybe in some cases, uh, once every couple of months. So I won't inundate you, I won't bug you every day with new videos, but when I do come out with some videos, it's stuff that I think that you would like to know. So thanks again for checking me out. And remember, you guys know what I'm gonna say, right? Get out there as much as you can, enjoy God's creation all around us, and keep on looking up.